Okay, everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to just talk about how to properly interpret a METAR and TAF. So we're back at the Aviation Weather website. Um, this is used in Canada. And we'll just select the METAR and TAF. Uh, then we have an aerodrome ID we can enter in here. We'll put in London there. Um, if you don't know the ID, you can search it on the right hand side and it'll give you the airport identifier but if we bring up London it's going to give us both the METAR and the TAF now uh, maybe we'll we'll bring up a couple others as well to use as a good example uh, so let's take a look at Kitchener here we have the METAR and the TAF. So starting from the TAF, there's a couple terms that I'll define to start with. Um, beginning with FM. So when you see this, it's standing from, and what it's saying is from this date, the 13th at this time, 22 Zulu, this is gonna be the weather moving forward until the end of the forecast period. Um, and then, Everything before it, you can kind of ignore if you're going to be flying at 22 Zulu. Uh, same thing, once you get to the midnight Zulu, you would forget everything before that. And this is going to be the weather from there. Now, looks like well, this evening, tonight, they have a tempo in here. So tempo is always given with a time period. So it's the 14th day, 00, zero to the 14th to 08 which is the tempo is representing this change in weather is going to occur for a time period greater than 30 minutes but less than an hour um, but not more than 50% of the forecast time. So there's a difference of eight hours here. So it's going to be less than four hours in between uh, z midnight in 08 Zulu but these conditions are going to happen at a period of less than an hour and it could happen a couple times in that time period so the easiest way to think about the tempo is that this weather is kind of coming and going it's not going to be consistent but it's coming and then going and coming and going it will be the easiest way to think about the tempos so you most likely are going to see that weather. Um, so if we start from the beginning of the TAF here, so we have the TAF, it gives the station, CYKF, it'll give the month, um, the day of the month and the time, so the 13th of the current month, which is January, and 1940 Zulu, you would scroll to the bottom here, it's going to give you your time distance difference, which is five hours for my location here. And then it gives the validity of the TAF. So from the 13th to 20 to the 14th of 08. And the this is when our first weather is valid. So from 20 to 08, the winds are going to be variable at 3 knots, plus 6 statute miles of visibility. And the clouds, we always add two zeros to the end of them. So we have broken 1,000 overcast 2000 um, and that's our predominant weather now temporarily from the 13th at 20 to the 13th at 22 we're going to see this five statute miles of mist broken 800 overcast 1500 feet so with this tempo it's only for two hours so you can kind of expect one hour is going to be the mist broken 800 overcast 15 and you're still going to be getting this weather as well so these these will be both current in that time period now from 13 to 22 zulu the winds are 280 at 05 plus six statute miles visibility scattered 1200 overcast 2000 so not, not much change the broken goes to a scattered um, and the winds very slightly increase 
and since it's from 22 you're going to ignore everything before that now we're getting to for another from the 14th at midnight the winds are 330 degrees at six knots plus six statute miles overcast 2000 and temporarily from midnight to 08 is broken 2500 overcast 4000 so later on after midnight the the ceiling's going to be increasing so we can see it trending upward throughout the evening um, one point I'll mention about these winds are that the winds are in degrees true so remember anything wind direction written down is in degrees true and the cloud heights are all above ground level so it's an overcast of 2,000 feet above Kitchener um, Kitchener is about roughly 1,100 feet so uh, the cloud level is going to be 3,100 above sea level or MSL, an indicated altitude. So 3,100 in the Kitchener area there. Then we also have a remark forecast based on auto observation, and our next forecast is by 14 at 2 Zulu. If we were going to be flying let's say at uh, 23 Zulu we're just gonna take this weather from 22 and that's where the, the time slot we're gonna fall in we would look at it there and determine whether it's good enough to go or not now we'll look at the Met tires is very similar in the codes um, the TAF is a forecast on what they're predicting it's gonna be and the Met tires what's actually happening so you want to look at the time periods and you want to just take a look and see are they lining up is the TAF accurate on that day sometimes they're not sometimes they are um, that, that's just going to change with the the weather system in the area so we can start down at the bottom here with the the 19 Zulu going back this would have been 4 14 2 o'clock local here um, saying it's an auto observation no wind light and variable nine statute miles of visibility overcast 900 feet those temperature is zero and the dew point is minus two the temperature is minus zero which means it's between zero and minus zero half a degree um you can see in the latest one here it's just zero which means it's between zero and positive half a degree so that's the the difference on the minus zero there next they give us an altimeter setting of 29.83 inches of mercury you can relate that to standard pressure 2992 and you'll note that it's a little bit lower than standard remark of a sea level pressure this is probably the hardest thing to interpret on a METAR really and all you got to do is get that number as close to a thousand as you can by putting either a 10 or a 9 in front of it in this case it's going to be a 10 so you'd be one zero one one decimal five millibars or hectopascals and because that's going to be closer than putting a 9 if it was 9,000 or 911.5 millibars so it'd be 1011.5 millibars on your sea level pressure we have a speci so a speci will be issued on intervals in between the hour if there's a uh, enough of a change in wind or ceiling so looking at the change here from 19 it was issued at 1913 the winds the same viz is the same the ceiling went from overcast 900 to broken 1,100. So a 200 foot change would have sparked the, the speci just because the ceiling was below 1,000. Um, and then they have an overcast of 1,600. But everything else is really the same. So just the change of ceiling issued the new speci there. And we'll take a look at the next metar here from 220 Zulu.
a little bit of wind, 340 at 4 knots, degrees true, obviously. Nine statue miles were scattered, 1,100. Overcast, 2,100. Temperature, zero. Dew point is minus one. And the altimeter, sea level pressure. Uh, looking at the TAF from what they were forecasting from 20 to 22, we're in that time range. They got the scattered 1100 overcast 21. Not really seeing that. Um, it looks like a little bit earlier they had the overcast 9 at 19. Um, and we don't really see the drop in the drop in the the mist or the visibility, the vi the mist causing the drop in visibility. But that said, it's only they only have 21 out, and it is just about 4:30, so it could pop up towards the end. Um, but it's looking pretty accurate with this weather here. So from 20. We have our broken 1,000 overcast, 2,000. You know, we're scattered in overcast. Those, those are very close. Um, the latest Metar 21 Zulu is also looks like that that scattered has lifted up into the overcast at 21, or blown out of the area, and they, they just have the overcast there. Um, and then you, you compare that to the TAF. So really, the TAF looks pretty pretty accurate um, moving forward. You could probably expect it to be quite similar of what they have on the forecast there. You, before looking at the TAFs, you would look at the GFA and read, read the GFA, interpret that, and then compare it to what you're seeing on the, the TAFs and then the METARs for cloud height as well as the winds and the shift of a wind, you know, if you have a cold front coming through, um, you're often going to see a veer in the wind. And then looking at your TAF, wherever they forecast that veer, you can in interpret, okay, that's somewhere around there is when the front's moving through. Um, so this is all stuff you want to work on. And really, the more you practice it, if you look at it every day, you're going to get pretty good at it. And it is quite easy to interpret. So it's really just practice getting the hang of it. If you have any questions about the METARs or TAFs, please leave them in the comments below. There's lots of different codes they have, like MIST. Uh, you can look those up and, and get familiar with them. There's lots of online resources for that. But any other, yeah, any questions, leave them below and I'll answer them. All right, thanks guys.